Okay. Okay, members, uh, thanks for uh, reconvening. Um, I'm going to pick up here with the um, item number 17 on the agenda, which is a discussion on the TB eradication strategy proposals. It's a page 343 of the text. Sorry. Chair, excuse me, Char Chair. Um, uh, I wonder just um, if we may be uh, given that some members are no need to leave us later on, but perhaps we could uh, go through the draft um, bill report in the first instance um, at, at item 18, Chair, if, if, if you and yeah. members are happy with that. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Okay, members, we'll come back to item number 17, but we'll do number item number 18 first. Okay, uh, this is climate uh, number two. Um, climate number the climate change number two bill consideration of draft report. Um, okay, the the draft report is page three hundred and eighty nine of your meeting packs. Members are content to proceed to a draft report, seeking the committee's cons consent uh, comments after each section. We we'll begin in section two. The section one merely provides details of committee membership and powers of the committee as set out in the uh, Belfast Agreement. Okay, member section two of the report can be found at page three ninety three. It's an executive summary of the committee stage and provides a general overview of the committee's considerations. Members, you can tap with section two, paragraph five to ten of the draft report. Mm -hmm. Claire. Yeah, Claire. Yeah, go ahead. Can I a wee bit of clarity first. I'm very confused and just need to know what I'm at. I'm, this is the first time I've done builds through a committee. I know the build stage through the assembly, um, but I was a bit confused last time, a bit confused this time as well. So see when we did that clause by clause this afternoon, I'm noting the, the update that Nick sent, um, sorry, on the issues that were raised this morning. So there's like a second paper along with that. Um, can I ask, what we did this morning was that signed off on the clause by clause consideration final votes and whatever because i was aware that we were going through the clause by clause and raising oh, issues yeah. there was a number of issues raised um and i think that in this report that they're down as noted so i'm just a wee bit confused as to where we are and what we're doing can i get just a wee bit of clarity please yeah nick you want to pick up now Nick? Hmm. Nick, are you in? Uh, are you in, in, in the line there? Sorry, Chair, I was um, on mute. Um, so, uh, Chair, just to clarify, this morning uh, we completed the clause by clause uh, decision making on the clauses throughout the bill and took votes on it. And that, that now has been recorded. Um, as the as the as the committee's decision on that, as we went through that process, uh, members expressed um, uh, either uh, some issues or comments on particular aspects of the clauses, and those have then been incorporated subsequently into a section of the draft bill report um, for members' consideration today. So um, the proposition today is to go through the bill report as drafted and seek members' consent or suggested amendments to various aspects of it. Um, so um, if any member has uh, a suggested change to the comment that has been inserted about their view on the clauses this morning, we can take that and incorporate that into the bill report accordingly when we get to that section. Okay. Okay. So yeah, so even the ones where there were issues raised, um, yeah, that's yeah, not, yeah. not for committee to be following up on. So if we were seeking further advice, whether that be either on policy or, or legal advice, we've signed off on that clause already then. Is that right? Like, can you pick up on chair, that? yes, indeed, chair. So we, the chair, the the committee. Um, there were a number of aspects where it was um, noted that there were uh, comments made that it would be useful to seek further advice in respect of some matters. However, the committee decision on the clause was made, so um, we can um, perhaps what we can do if the committee as as a whole has agreed to seek that legal advice, we could do it or further advice. Um, we could um, follow up with that, but that would be out with the bill report, i.e. separate to it. Um, but we could provide that information um, 
as and when is received for members for their information, which may inf- help to inform them at the next legislative phase. Hmm. So okay. it, can I be sure that so we're as a committee, we're not getting any further clarity or, or legal advice. We're just going to note that it was noted in the report. Uh, uh, am I right? So I, I am confu- I am genuinely confused. And I need to know, um, because I'm very aware, and I know Nick that you said this morning as well, about, you know, at consideration stage, anybody can put amendments. We know all that process as well, but it's just the fact that MLAs can't get legal advice as a, a member of a legislature, as an MLA, but we can as a committee. So I, I'm just seeking a wee bit of clarity that where legal advice was sought this morning, uh, is that going to be brought back to the committee or is it just going to be noted in the report? So, chair, chair, the advice the advice I would provide is is that if the committee as a whole is minded to seek that legal advice, we can, as a committee, pursue that, and then um, once it is received, give that for um, back to the committee, which individual MLAs could then use um, for their debates at further stages. Um, however, in the context of the decision being made on those clauses um, this morning. Um, I would suggest that that is an action, if it's agreeable to the whole committee, that we take forward outside of the bill report so that we would um, document that separately as a separate action. And is that normal process for committee stage of bill scrutiny? I've never done this before, so that's why I'm asking. So, so, so Chair, uh, through you, Chair, I suppose the 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 process has been followed in the sense that we've undertaken a number of weeks of informal deliberations on the various aspects of the clauses, sought clarity in areas of amendment which have been agreed, and then we've undertaken the formal um, decision-making on the clauses as drafted. Um, And then, so that if there's a subsequent or additional request for further clarity or aspect of some provision, the committee, uh, if it's agreeable as a whole, um, could seek to follow up on that um, and then use that information whenever it is received at a later date. But that, um, given that we've already gone through the informal deliberations process and the clause by clause decision making on it, um, I would suggest that that is out with the um, stage to look at the bill report itself and committee scrutiny of the bill. Okay, well, I just want to note it then that I was under the, the thinking this morning that when the issues were being raised, that that was stuff that the committee was going to be following up with rather than noting in a report and signing off on the clauses. Okay. Okay, happy enough with that, Nick, there? You put up on that? Chair, certainly, yes, we will document that in the minute of the record today. Okay. Okay, members. Um, okay, section three of the report um, can be found at page 395 of your pack. This introduction provides an overview of the report. Remember, it's okay with section three of the draft report. Mm-hmm. Okay. Section four is at page 396. It's a background information on what the climate change is and its impacts globally, nationally, and locally. It also describes the Paris Agreement, the aims of the COP26 conference and various legislative positions, provisions to make it climate change in uh, Britain and Ireland. The OK section 4, paragraphs 11 to 44 of the draft report. Chair. Yeah. Chair. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I was a wee bit, uh, I was taking a phone call at the start, so apologies if I've missed uh, important information. I, I'm also going through, I have my report. Uh, on its own, so uh, my pages are slightly not tying up, but I have a number of issues uh, with regard to, or of an issue regarding paragraph 10. Okay, go ahead, Philip. So I'm just trying to locate paragraph 10 here. All right, so it's, it's basically saying members are broadly welcome the bill and support most of its provisions and agree that it should move to the next legislative stage. So I suppose, I mean, technically that may or may not be true, but I mean, the most important aspect of the bill is 
the targets in my view. Uh, so I, I think that that particular line, given that you know there is opposition to the targets, uh, you know, <clears throat> is just too fulsome in its support. So uh, you know, member, I mean, members, I welcome legislation. Uh, rather than the bill, uh, so do, I mean, most of its provisions, I suppose you could see, but I do think there needs to be a caveat in that, that, you know, the, obviously the important part of the bill is the the targets and, you know, there is disagreement. I know it's probably mentioned elsewhere, but I think it needs to be mentioned in that paragraph as well. Can that be mentioned, then, Nick? Uh, Chair, yes, um, maybe a suggestion would be to we could simply remove that line under immediately under uh, point ten, which starts members broadly welcome the bill. Uh, that because then the next two immediate points highlight the disparity in views on the targets. If that would be a, a suggestion. Yeah, that's yeah, actually good. Yes. Okay. okay. Chair, is, yes, the is the room there? I mean, I'm seeing the the feedback from stakeholders on that as well. I mean, I think one of the big issues in terms of feedback from stakeholders was the fact that there was no independent oversight as well. Um, is that reflected or can it be reflected in there? So, uh, Chair, yes, indeed. But, uh, uh, under the report uh, in this section where we uh, have the commitment, yeah, there, there's a summary of the, um, the call for evidence views that we, we, undertook, we undertook. And it is documented in the report there that the vast majority of, of stakeholders were supportive of a locally based entity for um, a locally based entity to provide advice and scrutiny. Okay. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, sure. Can I can I come in there? Yes, John, go ahead. Well, geez, I'm not sure if we're using the WhatsApp at the minute or not, but um I would need something much stronger. Um, obviously, there's already media around today's meeting, um, and th this will all play out in public and elsewhere about who voted which way, etc. Um, people have different views on targets and dates, and I respect that. But <clears throat> the ambition is a separate issue um, on in relation to the percentage targets and, and the dates very separately and, and much more specifically, and, and this is something that needs to be tied down, is this issue of governance and oversight. Mm -hmm. um, that's not something that, that has to be compared between the regions. That's something that the Northern Ireland Assembly has direct responsibility for, and it needs to be reflected. Um, if some of us think there should be specific responsibility for that aspect of, of reporting on the bill, um, the report needs to um, clarify that some of us have serious misgivings about the absolute lack of clarity in that bill in relation to oversight. I've rehearsed the line already about outstanding commitments on environmental protection, which may or may not be able to be aligned to, to, to the responsibilities in the bill. Um, but the, the vagueness in the bill as was presented to me around governance and oversight is unacceptable. And I don't see any circumstances in which I could support what was put, for, put before me this morning. Um, I'll obviously have to talk to colleagues further, um, but that, 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 that's something I, I think I have to have reflected in, in right terms. Chair, on that point, I would just support what John has said there because it was Reading that, and we, we don't want to unravel it all again, but reading that earlier today, it was it was far too waffly. Yeah. Uh, um, just wondering where you can incorporate that into the report here. Yeah, sorry, I got, I got cut off there myself. Uh, can that be reflected, Nick? Hello? Buongiorno. Hmm. Nick, can you... Oh, I can't hear him. Well, Nick must be cut off. Hey? Chair. Hi, Chair. Apologies for that. Um, we, uh, whenever we move on to Section 11, 
is the section of the report in which those comments that were reflected this morning undertaking the clause by clause have been documented, um, including the concerns that John has raised around the um, provisions around governance and oversight. So that's the section of them whenever we get there. Okay. Sure. Additionally, um, I think I need to be associated with the section um, which says, Ms. Claire Bailey wishes to be noted that it would be there. I'm back to targets here, by the way. Uh, I'm having major sound issues here, Chair, by the way, when other people are speaking, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, th there's a section there that says, begins, Ms. Claire Bailey wishes to be noted that it would be a um, utility to seek, I'm not sure if it's correct, but legal as to the potential impact for Northern Ireland should it pursue an emissions target of at least 82%. Um, and then ends with Mr. Philip McGuigan and Mr. Patsy McGlone agreed with this view. I would like to be associated with that because I did agree. I thought I'd express that if I didn't hear clearly enough, I apologise. Okay. C can, I, can I have a clarified sure that my name will be added there um, sure, yes. on that legal clarification? Chair, John, yes, indeed, we will add that to that comment. Okay. And then I'm trying to find here on the report um, the governance issue. I'm playing catch up as well because I had major interruption there. Just getting to that now. But sure, I'm happy if you proceed. I can go back to this. I understand that I don't want to be hitting up here. Whatever is it on or whatever, some sort of that sound disruption. Somebody's yeah. got beamed up. It's pretty major. I, I know that I have nothing else switched on or there's nothing else on in the background here, so it's nothing at this, at my side, but sure. I'm having problems when people speak. Chair, that should be us now in terms of sound. And John, just to clarify, if there was any interference coming through there, uh, we'll certainly add your name to that comment in section 11. Okay. Okay. Okay, members, um, I'm going to move on then. There's section 5 is page 408 of your pack. Um, it is a summary of the UK Committee on Climate Change and Progress report. Uh, um, Tom is still waiting to get in there, I see, on the, on the WhatsApp thing here. Is there... You can you try to get him on there, Nick, or send to and we can we're going to just wait till you get some. Sure, yes indeed. Okay. Um okay, so so a member's okay with section five, uh forty five to fifty of the draft report. Okay. Okay, members yeah. section six is more than ten of the pack. It's information on the profile of the GHG emissions locally between nineteen ninety in 2017, as well as the sectoral breakdown emissions in 2018. And members, um, uh, are you content with section six of the draft report, paragraphs 51 to 53? Page 410. Okay. Um, section seven, section seven summarizes the. Right, members, can you mute there if you're not speaking, please? Section seven summarizes the CCC's advice outlined in the sixth. Carbon budget for NI can be found at page 412. Okay, with section 7, paragraphs 54 and 56 of the draft report. Chair, can I just again, just a bit of advice, apologies or clarity needed. Are we agreeing this report with the extras that was added this morning? Or is that going to be a separate piece that we're going to be agreeing? Nick, can I pick up on that there? Chair, yes, indeed. So the the only the only section which has been amended following the discussion this morning is section eleven, um, and that was circulated in email um, this morning at lunchtime to all members. That's section eleven, and we're currently at section seven. Okay. Okay, members. Um, 
Okay, section 8 members can be found at page 414, a uh, breakdown of the bill as drafted. Are you okay with section 8, paragraphs 57, 58 on the table, the draft report? Okay. okay. Um, section 9 sets out the committee's consideration of the bill and it starts on page 419 and it has uh, the timeline, the bill timeline, which is fifty paragraphs 59 to 71, call for evidence responses, which is 72 to 73, and details of oral evidence sessions held with stakeholders, which is paragraph 74 to 165. Members okay with sec section 9, paragraphs 59 till 165 of the draft report. Okay. Members, um, section 10. As at page uh, 445, and it describes the committee's informal deliberations on the emissions targets, which is paragraphs 168 to 181, the uh, carbon budgets, paragraphs 182 to 199, reporting framework, paragraphs 200 to 2004, independent oversight, paragraph 205 to 212, and duty on public bodies, paragraph 213 to 218. Option reporting, paragraph 219. Department responsibilities, paragraphs 220 to 223. Miscellaneous provisions and supplementary matters, page two, paragraphs 224 to 225. Examiner statutory rules, advice 226 and 27. Financial applications, 228 to two, paragraph 228 to 233. So, members, that's section 10, paragraphs 166 to 203. 33 of the draft report. Um, members okay with that? Have you, have my sure, can I just have it clarified, um, please? On page 454 of my report, in the section which starts 226, uh, while the committee welcomed the proposed role of CCC, um, considered there was merit in exploring the provision of additional uh, locally based oversight. Um, I take it that's just reflecting on the considerations we did before and not the outcome of today's considerations, which is reflected in the additional report we have. Chair, yes, Chair, yes that's correct. John, that's, that's a reflection of the informal deliberations phase. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And the meetings that we held with the Department of Yeah, yeah. Chair. Yeah, my, Nick, go my, ahead. My apologies. I, 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 I want to go back a, a good bit. Uh, this has been <laughs> going through really quick, and I'm, I've been forcing through my notes uh, and the thing, but I, I actually didn't, you know, we're beyond obviously a good bit paragraph 77 but I, I have a concern in relation to it so uh, if, if, if it's okay I'd like to go back and just raise my concern. Can you go ahead? Pat? So in paragraph 77 it says the potential merits of pursuing a more aggressive target were discussed and it was outlined that given the UK comprises only 1% of global emissions it is important to take a holistic view of what can be achieved locally. Dear estimates that uh, reaching net zero as compared to 82% would con contribute uh, all of this, blah, blah, blah. In the context, the FSA of seeking to deliver net zero was questioned given the significant impacts on the local. Uh, I, I, I just think that there needs to be a clarification and that all of that is what Dara said, n not necessarily what committee members have said. So, you know, I, I don't think it was the committees uh, view that you know, just given that we represent one percent, that that was all we could do. Or it I mean, there, there's different, uh, there's different opinions about the impact on the agri-food sector and the economy. So, I, I just think there's parts of that paragraph that are um, unambiguous about whether that's Deere's view or the committee's view, and I think that needs cleared up to make sure that it's clear that all of that is Deere's view. Mm -hmm. And sure, if it's possible to even reflect in there again that the fact that um, even trying to embed a just transition fund for agriculture, you know, if they're raising the economic concerns here for them as well, that a just transition fund is outside the scope of this bill uh, and not being considered. 
Okay. I'm having problems here myself. I'm having tactical problems here myself now and getting smitted. But uh, <laughs> Nick, uh, I can't actually see the report, but I've got my notes here now. Uh, Nick, can you pick up on that there? Can you? Chair, yes, certainly very happy at paragraph 77 to make it more explicit that those were comments made by DERA in their briefing to the committee. Um, and with regards to the suggestion um, about a just for transition fund for agriculture, um, that is, we will, we will eventually come to that whenever we get to the recommendation stages. That is a proposed recommendation the committee may wish, may, may wish to make in its report, given that um, uh, it wasn't uh, adopted within the informal deliberations phase. Could I just another wee point of clarity too? So uh, we're writing up this report um, on the committee's views and whatever. Does the committee have the ability to draft its own amendments, or do we just suggest the amendments to the department in the hope that then they'll be picked up and then reflect if they haven't? Yes. Uh, Chair, I'm just so, Chair, uh, uh, Chair, thus far there have been no suggestions um, to put forward a committee amendment to any aspect of the bill. And um, I suppose given that we've now completed the, the formal call of the clause and are, are reaching the end of the committee stage, I think it would be prudent if, if members have any amendments that they would wish to make to bring it forward um, in their capacity as an individual MLA at consideration stage. Okay. Um, William, you have it in there? No, you're, you're okay, Mr. Chairman. No, no. Uh, the, senior. The, the issue on that was mentioned by, I think, Philip, uh, on the issue of the the impact of net zero, the difference between net zero and, and 82%, I think it may be his view, but it, I mean, that that is not the case, but it is the view of the Climate Change Committee, it is the view of the whole entire industry, so I think we must take that on board. And there are different views, of course, in the committee. But well, um, my view is I take the view of the industry and the climate change committee very seriously, and I I am sticking by that. I think while it is the department's view, it is also the view of many in the industry. And again, the climate change committee was set up to adjudicate on that issue. <coughs> <clears throat> Chair, if, if I could as well. So, I mean, I understand that, you know, we are the ERA committee uh, and obviously then agriculture falls under that Then we have a heavy focus on agriculture. But, you know, it, it, should we be mentioning it in there all other sectors as well? I mean, there are many sectors who feel that this is not ambitious enough um, and support more ambitious and stringent targets. So I'm just saying, you know, yes, of course, the agri-food sector is an important one, and particularly for this co this committee. But you know, that's one sector. There are many others across it's Northern Ireland. Claire is the biggest employer in Northern Ireland, over hundred thousand. I'm not denying that, William. That's not even what I'm saying. You know, what I'm saying is I understand really, really, on this committee yeah. with agriculture, but you know, we've also got um, we've also got energy, we've also got transport, we've also got other sectors. Mm. Oh, and they need these targets as well. And just, just sort of piggybacking on, on what has been said here, and I can understand both points that have been made, but both are equally valid whenever we come to the just transition, because mm -hmm. just transition won't be solely about agriculture and how we yeah. represent a big rural constituency here. There will be other sectors uh, that may be hit by that. Some we may well be blindsided to. Um, mm -hmm. So therefore... I think whenever we're looking at it, we just look a wee bit beyond the box of agri-food and agriculture, which will be impacted, but there may well be other sectors impacted too that need protection through just transition. So, uh, ch ch Chair, if you, if you don't mind, maybe just by way of, of clarity, there, um, just to provide assurance to members that within the, within the report, we have articulated the feedback we have received from environmental groups in particular about their concerns about the lack of ambition and scope and that evidence that we've heard and also with regards to just transition on different sectors the new clause 16a which has been added um, at the committee's request um, outlines the need to consider the impact on the ag agricultural sector and other sectors and um, that may be most affected by the change so that is included within 
the provision. Sorry. Could I, I want to be? I'm not, I'm not being obnoxious here. Other sectors and potentially communities. Uh, the, because I'm, I'm looking at it, there just may well be impacts upon. Say, for example, a sector to my mind is say a sector either business or uh, whatever sector that may be. But there may well be impacts off this upon, um, I think maybe raised it a couple of occasions ago, um, may well be impact upon access to rural transport. That'll be a big, big issue um, uh, for many people. And we want to make sure that uh, uh, poverty in regard to mobility is, doesn't become uh, an issue as a consequence of that. And um, so um, if we could just, I don't know if there's a way of phrasing there, community or societal impact into that. If we could weave that into it, please, Nick. Uh, okay. Uh, Chair, uh, through you, Patsy, just to, just to clarify that within the Just Transition Principle uh, under 16A, it does um, reference the importance of engagement um, with, among others, workers, trade unions, communities, non-governmental organisations. All right, that's grand. That's okay. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then, members, so... Um, we okay then with those paragraphs 166 to 233 in the draft report. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Remember, section 11 is at page 462 of the draft report. It details the committee's clause by clause consideration of the bill. Um, members, page 230, section, paragraph 234 on the table of the draft report. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. okay. Section 12 is page 474 of the draft report. It's recommendations by the committee following its scrutiny. Are you okay with section 12, uh, which is paragraph 235 of the draft report? Mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, members, there's been a, obviously there's been a number of requests for um, amendments to the report, and these will be made by you, Nick, and brought before the committee next week. Is that right? Chair, um, Chair, and, and um, can I suggest, with it, just by way of clarity and, and for the record, that um, the request to changes that have been made under paragraph 10 were to remove um, the, the first point underneath it with regards to welcoming, uh, which referenced welcoming the bill. Um, a paragraph 77, it was to make it more prescriptive um, and explicit with regards that it was Deira had made those, those comments referenced at that paragraph. Um, and uh, John indicated... Um, that he would like section 11 amended to ensure that his name is associated with the comments made by Patsy and Claire this morning. Okay. Okay. Well, is that, are we discussing the, the new parts that were added from this morning? Sorry. Chair. Are we agreeing? Is that what we were, we were agreeing there? Nick, do Chair, um, if I could make a suggestion that perhaps we take, uh, given that we um, there's been a bit of discussion around Section 11, that we take a bit of time to go through it, maybe step by step. If I, um, if we, uh, if you, if we temporarily suspend the broadcast, I can then share the document on screen, and uh, the committee could perhaps go through it together to make sure that everyone is is, is yeah. content with the wording. How does that sound, Chair? Yeah, the Google's I'm, I'm I uh, something wrong on my end here. I can't actually see the document when I have one when I'm brought when I'm um doing the broadcast uh, on this occasion there's something wrong here. So that'll be good, yeah. Yeah. Okay, chair, I will um I will um I will do that now. Thank you. So 